four, three, two, one. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, this is Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections, Tuesday, February 2nd. Um, I'm going to call the roll. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg. Council Lady Evans. Here. Sorry, I'm here too. I'm not Madam Chair. Perfect. Um, Council Lady Lee. Council Lady Murphy. Here. Councilman Rutherford. Here. Council Lady Sepulveda. Here. Councilman Sledge. Councilman Sledge. Councilor uh, Styles. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to uh, Council Lady Lee. Sledge, Councilman Sledge. Okay. Um, pursuant to Governor Lee's Executive Order Number 71 regarding electronic meetings, I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the Metropolitan Council and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Can I get a second? Second. Perfect. Um, I guess we need to go down the roll um, for that motion. Um, if you will uh, say yay or nay. Um, Councilman Christopher. Aye. Council Lady Evans. Yes. Council Lady Murphy. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Aye. Council Lady Sepulveda. Aye. Council Lady Stiles. Aye. I'm an aye, and that is it. Perfect. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in favor, zero against. All right, we've got a couple of late filed legislations. The first is from Council Lady Sawara. Um, it's <clears throat> A resolution of uh, approving mayoral condition, mayoral conditional approval and acceptance of a local government emergency rental assistance grant from the U.S. Department of the Treasury to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Action Commission to be used for emergency rental assistance in accord with the purposes set forth in Section 501 of Div Division N of the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2021. Um, Council Lady Swar, are you with us? Can someone speak to, I mean, I, I know what the answer is, but can someone speak to the late filed nature of this? Hi, this is Cynthia Croom, Executive Direct, Director of Metro Action Commission. I can speak to it if allowed. Yes, perfect, you have the floor, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, it's uh, two reasons, really. One, we just found out last week uh, how much the actual dollars are, which is $20.8 million. And then secondly, we are it's, it's time-sensitive. Um, the funds must be spent uh, by the end of December, with 65% of it spent by September. And so in order for us to get everything in place to be ready for a March 1 start, uh, we needed uh, to do a late file. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions? I'm not seeing any hands. Do I have any objections to this late filed resolution? Again, not seeing any hands. Thank you so much for that explanation. I'm glad you were here. Um, the next is a late ordinance by Council Lady Toombs, um, an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, the zoning ordinance of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by applying a neighborhood conservation overlay district to various properties within the Haynes Heights area located north of West Trinity Lane and uh, west of Whites Creek Pike zoned RS-20, all of which is described herein. Um, Council Lady Toombs, are you with us? I am chair. Perfect. Can you just um, explain th just why it's being filed late? Uh, it was a, a staff error. It was supposed to be included in the batch of uh, bills on first reading, and it, it needs to track the planning and historical commission uh, process. Got it. All right. Does anybody have any questions or objections to this late filed ordinance? Seeing none. Awesome. Thank you, Council Lady Timms. Um, okay, on to elections and confirmations. Um, I'm going to take these all just because we have to do, oh, do I need to vote on any of those things, Hannah, for um, these late filed things, or it's just if anybody has objection or not, correct? 
if you could vote on both of them, that would be great. Okay, can I take them both on them together? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so I, uh, I'm going to take both of the uh, late resolution by Council Lady Suara and uh, the late ordinance by Council Lady Toombs. Um, if uh, if everyone, if anybody has any objection to it, well, how do I? How am I taking a vote on this? Um, I'm here, by the way, Chair. Oh, perfect. We've already got it covered. Um, I don't think we take votes on, on late files unless they're in the committee, right? Well, so I think what she's trying to get is just a consensus that everybody is on board, you know, to, to not object to the late filed aspect of these. Is that correct, Hannah? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know that, I don't know that it's really approved, but I think that, um, it would be best if we actually did have some, you know, a roll call vote since it's technically an action by the committee. Okay, so I guess my question to both of these is, um, do you have an objection to the late filed nature of either the resolution or the uh, um, the ordinance? Um, Councilman Rosenberg. I'm good. <laughs> Council Lady Evans. Yes, I'm fine too. Thank okay. you. Okay, Council Lady Murphy. All set. Councilman Rutherford. I'm good with it. Council Lady Sepulveda. I'm good. Council Lady Stiles. I'm fine. I'm okay. And I think that's everybody, unless uh, Miss uh, Council Lady Lee, Councilman Sledge, or Councilman Pol Oh, there's Councilman Sledge. I see you. I'm good. Um, I'm good with it. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right. So that's eight good with it and zero against. Um, okay, elections and confirmations. I'm going to put this on consent as well, just so we don't have to do multiple votes. Um, so the first one I'm going to take is for um, the Arts Commission reappointment of Miss Sherry Nichols. Uh, pronounce the last name because I don't want to uh, butcher it. Busey? Busey. Ah, I got it. Uh, for a term expiring February 2nd, 2025. Miss Busey, are you here? Yes, yes, this is Miss Busey. I'm here. So sorry. No, that's okay. Thank you for joining us. I, ju I just wanted to give you um, a couple of minutes to explain why you would uh, like to continue to serve in this capacity. Well, I've had, it's been so joyous being on the Metro Arts Commission. I feel like I've been connected to the arts community in Nashville for a long time. And I finally had the opportunity to do something about it by, um, you know, uh, exercising my civic duties. And I'm Thoroughly enjoying it. Arts need not only representation, but they need money too. So I'm on the finance committee and I enjoy making sure that people get the money for what they need to do. Perfect. Um, I see Council Lady Van Reese's hand up. Anybody from the committee first that may have a question? Um, let me scroll and see. I don't see anybody. All right, Council Lady Van Reese, you have the floor. Hey, um, I, uh, Sherry Nichols BC is a District 8 resident, but um, she also evidently, ah, oh, she turns her light on. Here I am. <laughs> Here you are. Okay. I was like, what's wrong with your electricity? Yeah. I can't work this out. Um, uh, this is, as, as mentioned, a reappointment. And uh, the, um, the folks at Metro Arts Commission, as well as her fellow uh, commissioners, I uh, could not speak more highly uh, of the work that she's done to date. And I'm so thrilled that she's willing to, to sign back up. Um, as an artist herself, you, you may uh, know of her and her sister are, as the, the, the pink bus ladies. Um, and uh, so there's never a dull moment uh, when uh, Sherry's around. Uh, we're very, very proud to have her as a District 8 resident. And I know that uh, she and uh, Ellen D'Angelico are going to uh, probably light the place up. So I'm very proud of that. I just wanted to step in and say uh, thumbs up to Sherry every day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for your willingness to serve. I'm that yeah, it sounds like a fun time. Maybe I should serve. I'm just kidding. I need more fun in my life, I think, at this point. Um, okay, Convention Center Authority appointment. I am not going to try this last name. Um, Mr. Alfred DeGraffenried. Say it one more time. DeGraffenried. 
See, graph and read. All right. Got it. That was, I was going to be close, but not perfect. So um, for a term expiring January 20, 21st, 2022, um, that would fill the unexpired term of Mr. David McMurray. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight. Can you give us a couple of minutes on why you'd like to serve in this particular capacity? Sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have worked uh, for all three levels of government, local, state, and federal levels of government in my short career, and I've uh, always been very interested and uh, good governance the government. And I've been here in Nashville for almost 20 years and I've seen Nashville grow. And tourism, of course, is something that's vital to the future of Nashville and to any city across the world. So I'd be honored to, to serve in this capacity. And um, right now I work in higher ed. So um, one other thing is that I noticed that, you know, it's very important for to come to the city um, and to help with the vitality of, and the growth of the city. So I just appreciate you all taking the time to invite me here tonight and for the nomination. Perfect. Thank you so much. I see uh, Ms. Murphy's hand up. Ms. Murphy, or Council Lady Murphy, I'm sorry, you have uh, the floor. Thank you. I just wanted to add that I know tonight for sure that I am uh, Mr. DeGraff and Reed's favorite Murphy. I know that sometimes <laughs> Murphy is around him, but I've known Alfred for a very long time, and I'm really glad that he is going to be able to fill this. He's got a lot going on in his life and has so much potential, and so I'm really happy that he's able to share that with the city. So thank you for your service, Alfred. And uh, all of my parents know I'm a favorite Murphy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You are my favorite council council member and uh, council member Murphy. <laughs> all right. Anybody um, else? I don't see any hands up. So all right. Oh, I see um, Council Lady Sawara. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm not on the committee, so thanks for recognizing me. Uh, but since I'm on, I wanted to take the opportunity to add to what Councilmember Murphy said. I've known Alfred for a long time. Uh, he works very hard in the community, uh, easy to connect to, uh, always making the right connections and, and making everybody feel welcome. So uh, uh, we appreciate his stepping up to serve, and I know that he's going to do a great job. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Councilmember Suara. Thank you, Council Lady. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. DeGroff and Reed. Yes? You got it. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and for your willingness to serve. Thank you, Chair. Absolutely. Um, okay, Employee Benefit Board appointment of Dr. Stephanie Corsi Bailey for a term expiring June 30th, 2022. Uh, doctor, uh, Dr. Bailey, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hi, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, I would uh, love to hear a couple of minutes on why you would like to serve on the Employee Benefit Board. You have this um, I was just, I just recently came through this committee about a year ago for my reappointment to the board, the Metro Benefit Board. I was the first medical person to be on the board. Um, and um, th my term was interrupted, having to become an employee of the Metro Politan government. And so I'm no longer in that employment and I'm stepping back into my service. Gotcha. All right. Um, I see Council Lady Murphy's hand up. Council Lady Murphy, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, Dr. Bailey, I know you, when you were at Health, we had some conversations probably about a year ago, um, and I really appreciated your help there. But I know when you've been before us before, I had some questions about the way you interpreted our um, disability presumptions here in Metro. Mm -hmm. And I had concerns about that. Um, we've discussed that in this committee before. Uh, and, and that stemmed from me walking a benefits board and it was, there was a, I don't remember, it was a, it must have been a firefighter that was up for disability presumption um, benefit or pension rather. And, and I really disagreed with the way that it was handled um, and comments that were made about the way Metro interprets what is, is the burden of proof because a, a, a disability presumption means that they are presumed to have contracted that cancer on the job. That is something that the council has passed and the state now has legislation about cancers as well. And so I wanted to give you the opportunity to kind of discuss that briefly with us um, because I'm, well, I think that you've done a great job at Metro Health and I appreciate the help that you gave to my district and to our city there. I have concerns about the interpretation um, that you hold when it comes to the benefit board. I remember that conversation um, at the last reappointment and my, you know, um, 
there are so many things to determine that. And I think my answer at that time was how deliberate the benefit board is about all cases. And uh, I don't remember that particular case, but I do remember the conversation coming up in the last uh, confirmation that I had from this committee. Um, I look at each, each, each um, individual case that comes before us. And being a medical personnel, read every line for the medical from all the consultants, all the physicians, the laboratories and everything. So I don't have a, I do think that the, the law is correct. Don't have any problems with that. But each individual case and how it is presented or what the parameters of them um, lend themselves to uh, different interpretations, even though the court is set. So I take each individual case differently. I do not have a preconceived notion about how I am going to rule on any um, metro officer or policeman or fireman that comes before the case. It's all individual and the case adds up to the story that then gets to the answer, the decision. Thank you for your question. But I also, just, I also, I also remember suggesting that uh, the benefit board does have um, study groups and it might be a particular question that we need to put on the agenda for one of the, you know, just for us to just delve into it in debt as a um, benefit board. So that I remember suggesting that too last time. Yeah, I think that's something that we need to follow up with, with um, Director Hall, with uh, Shannon Hall, with personnel um, and HR. I just think the law is very clear uh, at the metro level and what they have passed at the state level, um, that it is a presumed uh, um, disability for our employees. And and I think that's very clear um, history and things like that. And you definitely need to, to listen and look at the, the evidence, but um, it, it is very clear for me of what a, a disability presumption is in the law and in, in the Metro code. And so I'm just very concerned about, about your position going back on the benefits board. Um, I think that I definitely appreciate your time serving there, but maybe that we do need to have um, variety of who goes before that. And so um, I think at this time, I would just feel more comfortable if we had um, some turnover on that committee. And, and so I don't feel that I can support you tonight. It's nothing personal because I think you've done something great when, when you were at Metro Health and helped me with my community. Um, and I'd love to have you continue to help in that role. But when it comes to the benefit board, I'm not comfortable supporting you here tonight. So, um, Lady Johnson, I would like to vote no on that um, appointment. Okay, we will, um, because there is objection, we will take this vote separately. Um, Council Lady Suara, you are um, recognized. Uh, thank you, Chair. And it looks as if the one time I came to your meeting, I'm following uh, Councilmember Murphy. Uh, but I do want to speak in support of Dr. Bailey. I happen to work with Ad Meharry, uh, uh, and I've been privy to some of her decision making roles and, and how fair she is. Uh, I do not, I'm not privy to the inf uh, information that happened couple of years ago but i do know that we sometimes we take stances based on the circumstances and our position can change uh, and people are willing to listen and learn uh it's very important that we look at uh different people with different lenses and take a, a, a diverse opinion into consideration when making a decision i think that's part of what she brings so uh, i'm not a member of the committee i don't get to vote but i do know dr bailey and i thought i would just chime in with that so thank you I appreciate that, um, Council Lady Sora. Does anybody else have any questions or comments for Dr. Bailey? I don't see any. Okay, I want to go ahead and take a vote for the committee um, for this particular appointment. Um, Councilman Rosenberg. Councilman Rosenberg. Council Lady Evans. Yes. Okay. Um, Council Lady Murphy, I have you as a negative. Um, Councilman Rutherford. Aye. Uh, Council Lady Sepulveda. Aye. 
Um, Councilman Slick. No. You said no? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, Council Lady Stiles? No. Council Lady Stiles? Yes. Oh, that was a yes? Yes. Council Lady Stiles, I'm sorry. Yes, that was. Okay, sorry. Um, all right, I'm going to vote in the affirmative. And Councilman Pulley is still not here, I don't think. Um, Councilman Lee, I skipped over you because I had you as absent, but here you are. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so that is six in favor, two against. Um, thank you so much. And I'm going to move on to... The next, um, back on consent. So Stormwater Management Committee appointment of uh, Mr. Trey Lewis for a term expiring October 31st, 2023. Uh, Mr. Lewis, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. Thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. And would you give us a couple, it's, it's, it's an appointment or a reappointment? Because sometimes these things are incorrect. Uh, initial appointment. Initial appointment. Well, thank you so much. I would love to, uh, to hear a couple minutes on why you'd like to serve in this capacity. Certainly. I've lived in Nashville my entire long life, <laughs> and uh, we won't go into details on how long it's been, but... Uh been an avid boater for my entire life, and one thing that I love about the, uh, the water in Nashville-Davidson County, in spite of what many of you think about the Cumberland River, it is much cleaner today than it was 30 years ago. You can actually swim and water ski in it, and I remember doing that as a child, and it wasn't pretty. But anyway, um, I've been in the new home development and construction industry for 21 years, and some of you may think that's a conflict, but it's really not. Because in that 21 years, the company that I work with, Old South Properties, has never been before this board. So we want everybody to do things the right way, like we have to do. So that's why I would like to be on the board. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'd certainly be glad to answer them. Thank you so much. All right, just, um, Ms. Uh, Kills Lady Stiles, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to speak in, in favor of Mr. Lewis. He is very active in our community and um, a really great citizen, and he would be a phenomenal addition to any board. And I apologize, Chair, because I was having some uh, technical difficulties, but Mr. DeGraffa Reed is also phenomenal. So I want to be sure that I put that out there as well. So it's both wonderful additions. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Council Lady Stiles. Does anybody else have any other questions or comments for Mr. Lewis for the Stormwater Management Committee appointment? All right, perfect. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. I appreciate you. you, you um, Thank you. Um, I'm going to try this one. Uh, Stormwater Management Committee appointment of Mr. Kabir Sandu. Madam Chair, that's a great job. <laughs> Thank you. For a term expiring October 31st, 2023, Mr. Sandu will fill the unexpired term of Mr. Jesus Gomez Velez. Um, all right. A couple of minutes on why you would like to serve in this capacity. Sure. Madam Chair and members of the committee, thank you for, for having me here. I'd, I'd like to say that uh, for those of you in the room that know what Baptist Hospital was, you probably also are a Nashville native. Uh, so Mr. Lewis and I fall into that category. Um, I, um, I, I, I am a licensed civil engineer. I've spent my early childhood in Nashville following my father, who is also a civil engineer, uh, to job sites, reviewing stormwater management issues, pre-development surveys, and sometimes even crawling through stormwater pipes to perform inspections. This is pre-cameras uh, that were being sent down the the pipes as they are today. So I, I have a unique hands-on experience uh, from an early age in dealing with stormwater management issues. Now, professionally, I, I've seen all the, the issues that were related to the 2010 flood and understand that our city admits this explosive growth need sensible, well-planned and enforced storm, stormwater management control. Um, I think that, well, I, I do know that uh, most of the cases that come up in front of the stormwater committee are related to buffer variances, and, and developers are oftentimes trying to, to make the most of, of, their, of the land that's under development. 
And I think it's important to have people on the committee that serve as lobbyists for our, our streams and rivers, and even for the endangered Nashville crayfish that, that, that habitate our, our Mill Creek waterway. So those are all really important pieces, I think, that uh, we as a committee need to understand and, and respect the role uh, of, of, the, of the Metro Stormwater, of the Metro Water Services staff in, in controlling those initiatives as uh, we especially in bank on a redevelopment of the East Bank, the River North, and some of these other large-scale developments that are going to create a massive impact to, to not only our city-state, but our waterways. So th th this very committee had the confidence in me to uh, serve on, on the airport authority and uh, was there for the planning of the BNA vision. It, it would be an honor for this same committee to have that same confidence in me to be a part of Metro Stormwater to assist in, in, in the growth of our city. So thank you and, and glad to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, Council Lady Stiles, that may be an old hand, but I'm happy to give you the floor for this um, if you have a question. Council Lady Stiles. All right, I'm going with old hand. Does anybody else have yes. old hand? Please okay. do. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions or, or hands raised, old or new. Um, and so with that, I'm going to take this consent agenda and I'll read back through just so everyone's on the same page we have arts commission reappointment of miss sherry nichols uh busey the conventions that are authority appointment of mr alfred de Groffney, de Groffenried, sorry the employee benefit board, um, board appointment of uh dr stephan no sorry uh the stormwater management committee uh, appointment of mr trey lewis and the stormwater management committee appointment of mr kabir sandu um councilman rosenberg Council Lady Evans. Yes. Council Lady, uh, Council Lady uh, Lee. Yes, yes. Council Lady Murphy. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Council Lady Sepulveda. Aye. Councilman Sledge. Aye. Council Lady Stiles. Aye. And I am in favor as well. Is Councilman Pulley here yet? No. All right. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in favor, zero against on our consent agenda for appointments. Thank you all so much for your willingness to serve and for being with us tonight. And we will see you later in the main meeting. Um, before we adjourn, I do um, want to bring to everyone's attention that we do have some vacancies on the Community Oversight Board, four to be specific. Um, there's 15 uh, people that have been nominated or who have applied, and that is way too many for us to handle in these um, 15 to 30 minute meetings um, and before the council meeting. And so we are going to have a special called meeting to um, go through all 15 of um, of these uh, appointments or uh, applicants on Thursday, February the 11th at 4 p.m. Um, you should be getting something from either Rosie or um, someone to, to do a placeholder, but if you'll just keep that in mind um, that we will be having that discussion on Thursday, February 11th at 4 p.m. Does anybody have anything before we adjourn? I see nothing. Thank you so much. We're adjourned. <laughs>